Yeah, how many retirements does a guy have? I remember being at the end of 2015 and thinking, well, this is the fittest I'll ever be for the rest of my life. It is nice to be able to continue to see this up-down trend and to toy with that trend and not just give up cycling cold turkey. I mean, I stopped racing then because I wanted to continue to love riding my bike and I still love riding my bike and it's such a gift to have that opportunity. I'm back. The 2024 plans are to take the same level of seriousness that I that I used in the world tour and bring that to contemporary gravel. I've picked up a coach for the first time in nine years. Uh, I'm working with a nutritionist for the first time in 14 years. I'm working with a strength coach, coach for the first time in my life uh, with the hopes of, of doing well in gravel this year. You know, I've, I've seen this swell of seriousness take over gravel and I came on to the sport early on and then this thing has happened and I'm just sort of like waiting in the wings being like, oh, what am I supposed to do? And rather than being a curmudgeon and dick in my heels in the ground and saying, I remember a better time. I, I'm trying to keep up with the times. Yeah, the last couple years have, have had their setbacks in a very big way. At the end of 2021, last race of the year, I went down to crash a big sugar and absolutely destroyed my elbow. I think typically, my understanding is typically if you break the olecranon, which is your elbow bone, you'll snap off a little piece and then you can have it either heal by itself or have a little bit of, you know, pin stuck in it and put back together that way. In mine, I had 16 pieces of hardware that have been living there for, for two years. I was struggling with it and I was dealing with the pain. I just thought, okay, well, people live in chronic pain and, and I could put up with this month after month. The pain was still there, it wasn't getting better, it wasn't getting worse, just like, this is a, this is a thing. And I, I saw the original surgeon and he was wary about having the hardware removed. I ended up talking to a second opinion and that doc said, oh man, I can remove the hardware, give you more range of motion, reduce pain. And I said, sign me up for that. All of these things happening around the same time. Hardware out, another not so minor setback was, was di being diagnosed with a pulmonary embolism. And so I feel like I, I took the better part of 2023 just figuring out what it's like to, to live with this event, having had a pulmonary embolism because it's not something you take lightly. So I've, I've traveled the country speaking with uh, a couple specialists and I feel in very good hands and, and safe and excited to be racing again. The, the challenges of riding here are considerable, especially given what it takes to be competitive in 150, 200 mile races, you know? I mean, like you can't fake that massive endurance base that you need. I'm trying to rebuild from not doing it at the level that I, I know I'm capable of in working with the coach, it was, it's huge hours. I mean, especially when it's cold and freezing and, and snowy and just in every way, not the climate that you would affiliate with logging massive hours. There are plenty of days I go out for a two, three, four hour ride. I'm like, I guarantee I'm the only person riding in Vermont today. This is a different kind of, of work. I, I know for the first two weeks of the month, I was just not a pleasant person to be around. And I would come back from a ride and just sort of grumble under my breath about, oh man, that was another miserable ride. And Laura made a comment. She's like, you took this on yourself. And from that moment, from that conversation, I've stuck to the program to the T. I have not changed anything and I've not complained about the weather. I think it's a mental switch to say, this is what I'm doing. So if, if the program says seven hours and it is 17 degrees outside, I'm like, okay, so be it. That's what it's gonna be. I am hard and fast sticking to the program when it comes to volume, when it comes to intervals and, and just making sure I do the work. This winter has been interesting. It has been a complete mix of everything. It's been warm, it has been frigid, it has been snowy, it has been bone dry. At the beginning of the winter, you look at this three month period and you, there are plenty of days you come home cold and wet and your bike is filthy and you think, 
I don't know how I'm gonna get through this week of training, let alone the entire winter, but chip away, chip away, chip away. And that's just sort of, you know, that's the nature of endurance sports, I guess. One of the perks of living in Vermont is there are so many gravel roads. In the winter, you avoid gravel roads and you would avoid dirt roads because they have, they have become something of a bog. It's just mud, it's filthy, it is. You can get your tires stuck, you can, you're can you prone to crashing. There are ruts that will absolutely suck up your bike. If you want to have a really dangerous gravel race, do it in the winter in, in Vermont, it's gravel roads. Aiming for six hours, uh, largely an endurance ride, a couple of sprints scattered, scattered throughout the ride. Uh, going to the flatlands, we're gonna go sort of southwest, the Banana Belt of Vermont, where it's a little bit warmer. Sunnier, bright bluebird, bright sunshiny day, so hard to beat this in early February. Hundred and eleven miles. 20 miles an hour, 46 degree average. Man, can't beat that. A massive goal for the year is to do really well at Unbound. I have won the race twice. The first time I won it was eight years ago. So to do well over that eight year expanse of time, I think would be, that's, that's huge. Recognizing that the level of competition is through the roof, that the, the way the race is, is raced is completely different. I mean, I used to talk about the first hour of racing as the most boring hour of gravel racing that exists because no one wants to show their cards. Now, the amount of horsepower, it's like, it's racing from the gun. So my calendar in general, it is front heavy because there are so many races beginning basically from March through June. Um, and after that, it quiets down a little bit, which is nice. Mid-South is uh, an early season goal. Do really well there. I mean, that's, I feel like that is the first place that people go to, to see where their winter fitness has gone. It's such a great melting pot of an event in terms of, in terms of the people who show up. It's like, there's a very central love of the bike there that you don't see at other events. Um, so really excited to get down to Stillwater, Oklahoma for that. I mean, I remember when I, when, when I first posed it to social media, I said, hey, this is this thing that I'm gonna be doing. I, I heard from a lot of my contemporaries. I think they, they appreciate the peacefulness of it, the throwback in time that, that I'm allowing myself to do and that I'm allowed to do. I mean, another huge reason that I'm doing this is I feel like I'm doing a disservice to this position I'm in unless I embrace the support of the industry that I have and, and the ability to, to go to events and throw myself at the sport, you know? there's. There are a lot of people who, who would give their left leg for this kind of opportunity. So, you know, I, I, I still love riding, I love comp competing, I love the process. I think I like the process more than anything. So, like, the midst of what I'm in right now, it doesn't make sense to complain about the weather and, and complain about the wind being bad. It's like, this is it, this is why I'm in it, this is fun. I had a great conversation with a sponsor just yesterday about what what does one deliver? And, and this is somebody who oversees world tour teams as much as they see individuals, as much as they see small teams. And results are gonna go like this for every team. A team might do well one year, and might do poorly the next year, and it's the whole storytelling piece, right? I mean, like, if I come away with this not having told an interesting story, that is where I somehow failed. <laughs> I think I'll come out of this winter with a, with a tremendous appreciation for the time I used to have. I mean, I raced as a professional road cyclist, as a single guy with no kids, and now the juggle is very real. It, it, it presents its challenges, but it's really fun to, to have the kids at home and have the support from Laura at home. And, and instead of going out, hey, dad's going for a bike ride, Laura says, dad's going to work today. I'm just like in such a privileged position to be doing this. I'm lucky.